from? I'm Eric Berger. I'm from San Diego, California. I did my undergrad at Point Loma Nazarene University, and I did the master's program as well through Point Loma. Uh, what years were you here at Point Loma? I was here from 15, 2015 to 2018. The first time I heard about biomechanics was through the undergrad program here at Point Loma uh, for the applied health science undergrad. I took a biomechanics class. It was online with Dr. Aguinaldo. Um, and that was where the, the first time I've heard of it as a part of a curriculum. So I've heard of it before, but that was where I was introduced to the actual subject. Um, what was the first question? The master's. Yeah, master's. Okay, so my master's was in science with kinesiology um, in sports performance. And there were other classes in biomechanics as well there. So that was a good segue because before in undergrad, I had not taken physics prior to the biomechanics class. So after physics, I got a better understanding in the master's biomechanics as to putting everything together. And I think going forward with biomechanics students, uh, definitely take physics first. <laughs> so <laughs> it makes a lot more sense. But combining of the math and the science is a great little thing that I got interested in. Is that what kind of um, motivated you? Yes, I was a big math fan. And then science later, after I learned what the body can do. Uh, so the kinesiology aspect of the science was great and then adding math to it was awesome especially when you can help people with it like prevent injury get them back to full speed it's it's a great little tool yes i did my capstone research on a validation study of an imu sensor that is worn across or up on top of the skin at the ucl in order to prevent injury, this IMU helps with load management, workload, and it also measures some other variables as well. But my study was on the validation of its capability to estimate the valgus torque at the elbow during the throw. Okay. Cool. And what do you use to validate it? Come so we use the gold standard, the motion capture, um, and we did a Pearson correlation to see the validity of the capability of the IMU that we were measuring. So it, it was a 0.67 um, R score and the R squared was around 0.48. So it was moderately weak on, on its validation, but it's still being used. I'm not gonna name names. Uh, it's being used amongst multiple organizations. <laughs> It's yes, anyway. very much so. It's very easy and compact and it's easy to use. You can, it's way easier than the 10 cameras that you got to set up with a computer, with a biomechanist, with all of those things. So it's very feasible as an organization to want it. I have, I first presented it with the master's capstone, um, then with ACSM for the virtual tour and also with the ABBS, the American Baseball Biomechanics Society, which is new. <laughs> and that was awesome. That was a good little experience because that was also through Zoom with around 250 people watching me. That was really fun. <laughs> I looked at the number down there right before. I was like, okay. Yes, yes, it did. Um, I, I got... I think I, I did. I had to bail. I had to go to work right after because the person ahead of me took like 30 minutes with the presentation. And I was like, this is going over time. And so I had to leave before the question and answers. But yes, we did that. And it was a good experience. I got like 30 LinkedIn ads after that. Yeah, it was really cool. So they remembered it. <laughs> so in the master's program, there was the internship course you had to do an internship for the credit. Uh, for that, I went up to Cedar sinai Colonel and Job in LA, and I worked there for a couple months, and I was going up there three days a week, staying in an Airbnb in LA. It was a nice little trip. 
Um, but we combined resources. So we were using their studies and piggybacking that with our IMU and using their motion capture. But in return, we cleaned their data. So I was doing that while we used their data for my capstone research and our research with the validity studies and everything we were using there. After the master's, I got an internship with the Tampa Bay Rays as a sports scientist intern. We were doing mostly workload management for the team. Um, we would start all in spring training. We would have every affiliation all there. So we had around six interns all in one little building, but our office looked over the field. It was great. You know, like yeah. that's where I want to work forever. Like just with a background of baseball. So, um, but we did workloads. So we would go out and measure weather every day because it's a very key variable in Florida with humidity, with heat, all that, with keeping your guys healthy and able to play the next day. Um, we also did throw counts with throwing program as well as in game in between the innings and everything. So it was very detail oriented. We had to tally throws in the stands every single game. It was, it's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> um, we also did nutrition stuff. We did strength and conditioning things. We did stuff with the athletic trainers. We did little wellness checks every morning. We would send that out to the team and they would reply back as like, I'm feeling pain in the forearm. We also did a strength test every, every week to see where they were and measure every week if they were feeling fatigued, like we wouldn't play them or we wouldn't throw them as hard as many, like that kind of stuff. So we were managing their workload essentially just in multiple different ways. And after that, I went to the Giants for this season, 2020. What a season. And we were, I was a biomechanics intern there. Um, we worked primarily with biomechanics on the pitchers. We were establishing their first year with a biomechanics program. So they were setting a base with all pitchers. They were getting everybody on there to try and see where they can go with it, whether it be workload management, injury prevention, coming back from rehab, like see where they are as compared to where they were with preseason, that kind of thing. With biomechanics specifically, I do see it staying in the organization. I don't see it going anywhere. There's no way that you can have a great tool like that to measure stress on the body through a very stressful motion, such as overhand pitching, and hopefully with hitting soon, if not already happening without me knowing. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, know, I know it's happening, but like, I don't know if it's being implemented everywhere, but that's another story. Um, I don't see it going anywhere except for being more valuable with teams that don't have it yet. Uh, I think they're gonna desire it once they see everybody else seeing the injury rate go down because they can manage those manageable factors better. Yeah, with with the variables that you can control. So, yep. Yeah, the performance is a big factor too. So you can get a kid from the minors who just came out of high school and didn't want to play college because he didn't think he would get there. and. He's going up there 19, 18 years old and hasn't had the right training. He was just straight out of high school. So he's coming up and you can see some mechanics that are weird on the lower half or some strength that isn't there in the opposite side, like contralateral rotations and just everything. So you can develop a person into being a better player based off of base data that you collect with other players as well. So. Not everybody's the same, so you can't always compare within people, but you can always compare within that person. So you can try and correct a movement and then develop them in, based off that movement, get it better, 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 better. And you can look at the data and see if it actually is bit or better. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully you guys took physics. <laughs> um, I'm not joking about that, but I kind of am. <laughs> It makes life a lot easier with the physics. Uh, it was required for me because it was the 
DPT school requirement. So that was great going into it. But if not, brush up on it on Khan Academy uh, <laughs> or other resources. I don't mean to plug anybody, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, yeah. So go into it with an open mind first and then focus on something. Go into it with math and science combined and then you can start to focus it with a sport like what I did. I focus everything we did in the biomechanics class. I always relate it back to something in baseball. So like a jump squat or something like that, like everything that we looked at, like figured out a way that we could use it with a baseball player or something. Well, Make it interesting to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when everything opens back up again, I hope to eventually get strength and conditioning certified and combine it with a biomechanics background. So using that to develop players that are younger, not necessarily adolescent, but not the major league organization as well. Maybe in the major league organization, in the minors affiliation, that would be the ideal setting for me, I think, because it would be combining my love for fitness and the biomechanics together. That's where I want to go. Don't take any ideas. <laughs> no, that's, that's a worthy goal. I'm glad that 